It's just a whole subsection to the series that involves music that I don't think people really know about. He has a great appreciation for jazz. I think he understands music better than just about anybody doing this kind of work. You know, our composers, Ron Jones and Walter Murphy, are just brilliant, brilliant guys and are unbelievably versatile guys. You know, they have this, you know, Henry Mancini talent of being able to just work in any style. They've both done so much work in this, in this business. Ron wrote for the A-Team and Hunter and, you know, Magnum P.I. and all these, all these great action shows. My favorite credit of Walters is he used to orchestrate for Doc Severinsen on The Tonight Show when Carson was hosting. Doesn't get much better than that. Both Ron and I were just thrilled to come back. Uh, we just picked up where we left off. I think Walter and I are really the minister of propaganda. Hi, Cleveland. Hi, Joseph. What's the story? Morning glory. What's the word? Hummingbird. Have you heard Peter Griffin is slow? We're playing kind of Leave it to Beaver, kind of an homage to Ozzy and Harriet that, that everything's okay in America. Can he still drive a car? Can he drink at a bar? Will they let him have kids? Is his life on the skids? Hello, Mrs. Griffin, it's your neighbor Quagmire. Now that Peter's mental, you probably have some needs. Oh. We let the characters be wacky, and we play it serious, as if it's real people in a real situation. When I look back at the first season and the second season, it seemed like we were kind of like kinder and gentler, and that now we've gotten much more aggressive, much more realistic. Let me explain something to you, all right? We got to get her half naked and put her out front center stage, and that's going to make y'all billionaires because America loves hot white jailbait ass. Hit it! Cloudy skies and rain clouds have come to stay. Everywhere. I think we just are trying to give more, more pop. There's more kick. A lot of times the musical jokes are in the script uh, and uh, those things are ha have to be written ahead of time so they can animate to the music. Months go by, like six, eight months by the time the show is actually animated and cut together, and then we come here and record the track with the orchestra. We get about a week from the time we actually spot the show till we come here and record, and it's a busy week because sometimes we have anywhere from 30 to 40 little pieces of music in 22 minutes of show. It's kind of like a musical scavenger hunt every week because very often the pieces of music are so different. They're parodying movie scores or uh, popular songs. So it's, uh, a, lot of, a lot of the work is research. Music is just something that was pitched in the writer's room. It was, it was you know, one of those, can, can we do that? Would it be visually possible for us to do that? And uh, we would go and talk to Kara, our producer, and. She says, you know, I, th I think we can probably find a way to do that. The director, Kurt Dumas, as well as the overseas director in Korea, really did a great job on that sequence. I mean, it looks so much like the video, and Chris really, you know, is drawn exactly in that style, and he blends so well. It's just fun for us, you know, to keep digging this stuff up, and all right, how can we fit this thing into, uh, into our universe? Chris, where have you been? I don't know! Every parody that we do is true to the original source that it was from, like for instance if it was from a Broadway show or if it was from a movie. We try and make the musical arrangement sound just like that. The, the 
outrageousness is in the lyrics, so uh, Seth, that's Seth's department. <laughs> I don't know how to tell you this, Mr. Devaney, so I'll let these guys do it. You have AIDS. Yes, you have AIDS. I hate to tell you, boy, that you have AIDS. You got the AIDS. You may have caught it when you stuck that filthy needle in here. Or maybe all that unprotected sex put you here. It isn't clear. But the music on the show is very old-fashioned. It's very, you know, kind of this classic MGM style, you know, big band at times. Be sure that you see that this is not HIV. But full-blown AIDS, HIV, but really full-blown AIDS. I'm sorry, I wish it was something less serious. But it's AIDS, you've got the AIDS. You know, you need musicians to, to do that. You can't, you can't get that from a, you know, a Casio. We're lucky enough to have the best musicians in Hollywood playing here. We have such a great team uh, with Armin Steiner engineering and our, our music editors. We've used a live orchestra since the very beginning, and at this point, I, there's only four or five shows left on TV that do that. That was one of the battles that I fought at the very beginning. You know, we, 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 this is very important to, to the show, and we've actually, the, the use of the orchestra has grown a lot since, since we started, and you know, we do more musical numbers. It seems to get better and better, and they let the composer stretch out a little bit more. It's a, unfortunately a dying art, and it, it makes a huge difference. We're adding a whole new dimension, I think, to the show. It's a potpourri of all kinds of fun stuff. I don't think people always realize that what they're hearing is live music, but when you go in there and you see this band, the sound of that air in the room and those live players, it really, you know, classes up a show. Nicely done. Thanks, guys. <laughs>